I thank God for Apostle Jean and uh, Prophetess uh, always for an opportunity to be in this house. Amen. Um, I thank God. And what's interesting, I want to share something. I mean, you know that things happen, but you have to see God in them. Amen. I want y'all to get this. Things happen, but you have to be able to see God in them. Amen. Because if you don't see God in them, you're going to become people who are hopeless. And you'll become people who become consumed by the things that happen. Because I, I, the word of God going to talk about tonight, it, it may be a strange word for some of us because uh, I, I listened to some sermons today. I um, kind of like shut down. And, and, but it's, it's, what's interesting is that even tonight, that I, because of me, I, it was on me, I, um, I didn't communicate effectively. When I say communicate effectively uh, with Apostle so therefore we were like in the midst of a dilemma. <laughs> Amen. Because I didn't communicate effectively, we were in the midst of a dilemma. But how many know that? What was the first song we sung? Nothing is going to steal my joy, right? Look at somebody say, "Nothing's going to steal my joy." <laughs> See, some of us, you think you're waiting for me to preach for God to begin to move. God's been moving all day long. Amen. Some of us haven't been paying attention because you've been distracted. Amen. God was moving when he shut down your booth phone call when he was trying to stop you from coming there. Come on. God was moving. Amen. He, he, was, <laughs> he was moving. What was the second song? You are good. He's able, right? So it's nothing's going to, I want, I, listen, nothing's, it looks like nothing's going to steal my joy. Because he's able. Because he's able. What was the third song? He's good, right? He's good, right? How many of us believe that? And then I want to challenge you tonight. Do you believe that? Do you believe that nothing can steal your joy? That God is good and that God is able? Amen? Because I want to talk, God wants to talk to us tonight. And you know, it's going, it's the last you know, service before 2019. And people are like, oh my God, it's 2019. And people are going, they're going to, it's going to be a whole lot said about entering from 2018 and 2019. Amen? Amen? Y'all know when we're going to hear a lot of sermons going to be said to usher us into 2019. Amen? And we're going to talk about, people going to talk about the, you know, the year of change. You know what I'm saying? we thinking about there are going to be some changes in 2019. Amen? It's going to be some changes. People think about changes. And, but I want to talk to you about somebody that, <laughs> that doesn't change. There are going to be some changes. But I need to talk to you about someone who does not change. Because, see, if you don't believe that there are going to be changes, then you're not going to really be prepared. Amen? Amen. But I want to talk to you about in Hebrews 13, 8. And I know he um he's gonna have to speak loud tonight. Everybody say speak loud. Speak loud. But why he getting there? I'm gonna read it anyway. It says, Jesus Christ, the same, everybody say yesterday, yesterday. And, today, and today, and forever. And forever. See, somebody should have screamed on that. Somebody should have gotten rejoiceful on that. Because during a time where there are great changes, I need something or somebody that has some stability. Amen? See, I don't... I, it, you know, when you preach, I, I'm learning, man. When you when people preach it and they, and they get excited, they be like, man, and this is your year. And your year's the, here's the year for your change. And all these things. And... Mm. Mm. Can, can, we, can we talk a little bit? Can we just talk a little bit? Did anybody have a, an excitement, an exciting sermon in 2018? And, and what you heard and what you were excited about in 2000, I mean 2017. And when you entered into 2018, you were excited about it. And you realized that some of those things just didn't happen. 
Come on, y'all don't want to talk right now, right? Y'all don't want to be, we're going to be real like, how many of you might have got real excited and your people, people, we were preaching and, and you was like, man, oh, my change is coming and you, you might have lost your job in 2018. Come on, somebody. Or, or your friend turned on you in 2018. Or you got your heart broken in 2018. So change came, but it, it wasn't like how you expected it. Did anybody have any change entering to, actually last year entering to this year? Did anybody have any unexpected changes? Did, I know some people who, who might have got, you know, they might have backslid and and they struggled in 2018. Anybody struggle? Oh, we we don't want to talk tonight. We gonna to talk tonight though. Anybody struggle? You know what I'm saying? Anybody marriage is kind of went through it, but but a little struggle in 2000. You made it, but you were like, man, uh, this ain't. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me tonight. Anybody had any children problems? from 2017 and 2018, but you wasn't expected in 2018 because you got so excited about a message that was ushering you to the next year that you didn't have. You were like, wait a minute, this is not what the pastor was preaching. This is not what they were saying. They were talking about this is a new year. This is a, ah, this is a new beginning. I was expecting a new beginning this year, but I'm now that my kids got a little more crazy in 2018.
and some husbands gonna be like, I don't know if I can do this. Mm. Mm. In 2019, there's gonna be some storms. And there's gonna be some people who gonna start out of blaze and fade to the wayside. There's gonna be some pastors who gonna be exposed. And there's gonna be some be born again. Mm. What's interesting about that is to understand that everything in this life except for the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everything else is temporal. Everything else is temporal. I know some of you might not like what I'm about to say to you, but it's the truth. Some of us are going to lose some loved ones in 2019. Death is not going to go on vacation because you said a number changed. Some people are going to go to sleep. Yes. Some people may lose their mother in this year. Some people may lose their father in this year. Life is eternal spiritually but naturally, the old man, the flesh is, the outwardly man is perishing daily. The inwardly man is becoming a giant. Look at someone say, becoming a giant. Some of us may lose our place of living this year. Some of us may be tried with trials of sickness this year. But I know somebody who's the same yesterday and today and forever. Think it not strange when trials come to try your faith. When trials come to try your faith. So if you hear a man people are poking and saying that the storms are over and you don't have to worry about nothing. You knew you. Everything he is not being totally honest. Because my Bible tells me that life is full of trouble. My Bible tells me there's a season for everything. But there's some good news. Say good news. good news. See, I'm just, y'all know I gotta preach it how God gave it to me. Because I was sitting in the house yesterday and, and my wife came up and she said that the, the sink is, it was leaking. And as the sink was leaking, I'm like, oh man. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say, he said, these things gonna happen. Oh, yeah, I've been here. He said, these things gonna happen. In other words, your cars are gonna break down. There's gonna be some problems in the house. Your financial aid might start tripping. Y'all understand what God is saying? But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible says that Jesus Jesus said for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross. What, listen, he said there was something before him that was greater than what he was going through. 
God gave you and I a promise that's greater than anything you're going to go through. And this promise was not attached to temporal things, but eternal. Look at this. It's time to have your mind set on eternity. See, if your vision is based on temporal, you're going to be easily slid to the side. But Jesus' vision, he said, for the joy that was set before me, I endured the cross. He was looking at something that was greater than a cross. He was looking at something that was greater than the pain and the hurt and the, and the rejection and the pain that he was going to go through to get to the cross. He was looking at sitting on the right hand side of the Father. Oh, I know. See, this gospel, the gospel was supposed to take you to an expectation that was greater than what you were down here. Because if you can't get to an expectation that was greater than down here, then you'll become depressed down here. Because my wife will tell me, I don't know what everybody else wants, but I know my wife will tell me there's going to be perilous times toward the end. My wife will tell me that wickedness is going to increase itself toward the end. The key is, equip me to be able to walk through them. Don't tell me I'm not going to have storms. Don't preach a message to me that makes my flesh happy, but my spirit weak. You know what Jesus would do? Jesus would tell them things that were going to come. And they didn't look good, but you know why Jesus would tell me? He said, that your joy may be fulfilled. Why? He said, that when you see these things, you're not caught off guard. Is there anybody tired of being caught off guard? Because you've been getting some watered down gospel. Is there anybody getting tired of getting caught off guard and getting punched in your mind? Getting stole? Man, hey, what was that? No, tell me what time it is so I can be prepared. So when I see the storm come, I'm strapped up. Mm. Tell me there are going to be some storms so I can put on my storm gear. Tell me there are going to be some false prophets so I can put on my spiritual ear. Tell me there are going to be some deceivers so I can turn on my light. Are we getting this tonight? Mm. See, in a storm, we only have two choices. Storms come for us to make choices. Amen? Amen. Come on, y'all got to be with me. Amen? Amen. I want to read this. Colossians 3.2 says, Set your mind, your affection on the things above, not on the things on the earth. He says, I want you to set your affections, your mindset, on the things which are above, not the things upon earth. See, if my mindset is upon the things up above, I can walk through the storms 
that's upon earth. That's all Jesus was saying. He said his mind, he said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. His mind was on the joy, so he endured the pain. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. God says, I need you to set your mind on the things above so you can uh, so you can walk through some things in 2019. Because I want to promise you something. In 2019, guess what? You're going to be persecuted for his name's sake. The world is not going to become a friend of God. We preach in sermons like the world going to be like, hey, I'm down with you. Let's hang out. The world to the world. Look at someone say, it's time for separation. He says, set your mind, your affection on things above, not on things on earth. Verse 3, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Uh oh. I got one, but I'm going to focus on you in the back. I'm going to focus on you because you, 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 you're with me. You done died. For you died. And your life is now hidden with Christ. In God. Look at somebody. Say, no longer I live. But the life I now live. I live in faith. In Christ Jesus. Who gave his life for me? Come on, somebody. He gave his life for me. So the life I now live, I live in the one who gave his life for me. Look at something. I was purchased. Say, not with corruptible things. Like silver and gold. But by the blood. You better look at somebody say, by the blood.
shall appear. Give, give, me, give me a moment. I've got to read that. My handwriting is so terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I want y'all gotta get this. I want you to understand what is he saying to us? He's saying that you in the safe place. While everything is changing, you are in the place of constant. You're in the one who is the same today, yesterday, and forever. You are in the place of constant. When storms come, you are in the place of constant. When death comes, you are in the place of constant. When you lose financial gain, you are in the place of constant. They wonder why you can't be shaken. They wonder why you can't be broken. They wonder why you can't be moved. You are in the place of constant. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Look at this one. I mean, I gotta get it. Who took on death itself? Yeah. I'm in the one who went and took the keys of Hades. I'm in the one who took on death and took over hell. My life is hidden in him and, and what the hell? But I'm in the place where it's constant. I'm under the covering of the word. I hide it in my heart that I may not be lured away into a world that's full of chaos. Do you hear me? When Christ says, my vision is when Christ comes. Y'all, you, 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 you gotta get the part where you, you gotta get the part where it says, when Christ who is your life appears. So that's my joy. See why you out there going through changes. Changes uh, I'm being left this year. Changes that should I get an abortion this year? Changes uh should I lie for money this year? While the world is going through getting more higher and legalizing drugs and getting, you know, getting lit and getting towed off. See, they laughing at you because they like, you boring, why you? No, my life is hidden in something bigger than this stuff, this temporal stuff that you selling yourself out for. My life is in something, that's, my life has more meaning than the things that you just, cars and houses, cars get old and they break down. So when my, so you have when you get it, but you're crying when it breaks down. Houses are magnificent. Don't get me wrong, I like the house. But guess what? When the point, when the heat the point, when the heat of point and it's flooding off. Oh, oh, guess what? Oh, when the roof, they can't prophesy, you know, house won't get old. They can't prophesy, you know, car won't get a flat. I'm about to mess some of us up. They can't even prophesy to you that you're white. Won't be taken home. But that's okay because you're under the one who's the same yesterday, today. So if my car gets flat, he should provide all my needs according to my riches and glory. Come on, somebody. If, if my house gets messed up, he know what I'm in need of before I even. Come on. He already know what I'm in need of. And if you take my wife home, he's not the God of the dead. If you take my husband home, if you take my mother home, if you take my grandmother home, he's not the God of the dead. Come on, somebody. He's not the God of the dead, but he's the God of Abraham, Isaac. Now, there's no death in him. He's not the God of the dead. Don't get mad at him. They went home before you did. But my wife will tell me, ask him for, oh, ask him for my body is present with the Lord. Well, we're going to start rejoicing. 
होते हैं They're going to be looking at you. I hope you got in. Because we're coming. See, the life hidden in Christ means everything I sacrificed, my flesh, every desire I sacrificed in my flesh, it was for a greater purpose. I believe he's coming. I believe he's coming. See, 2017, 2018, 2019, 22, 2020, 2020, none, he coming. He coming. All the things that are added to me and taken from me doesn't change the fact that he All the stuff that I get doesn't change the fact that he and that my life is hidden in. Don't get me wrong. Trouble gonna come in. Situations gonna happen. There's gonna be things added to me. Come on. On your wedding day, you ought to be rejoiced, boy. You might want to think about why you're getting married. Ooh. But I promise you, they can't front the side of you on your wedding day that you all are not gonna have some disagreements. They can't prophesy to you on your wedding day that there won't be some storms coming. For my Bible tells me that anything that's built upon the foundation of Christ is going to be tried by fire. But, what, but the one that you're under, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he said, I'll never leave you, not even in the midst of a storm. Hallelujah. He said, I'll give you all things pertaining to godliness. To be able to fight through every storm in life. Yes. Have you ever felt like you came out of one and you went right into another? Yes. And you came out of another one and right into another one. Yes, and you know what our problem is? We so we so busy complaining about the other one that we fail to we fail to recognize the victory we got the one we came out of. Yes. No, hear what I'm saying. We're too busy complaining about the one we enter into. To be boasting about the victory we got in the one we came out of. But see, God says if you pay attention to the one you came out of, it'll give you strength to walk to the one you're going into. And they wonder why you don't act the same. Why? Because you're going from glory to glory to glory. Why? Well, why aren't I crying like I did the last one? Because it brought me out of the last one and given me strength to walk through this one. Come on, come on, come on. And guess what? May I find myself going through storm and storm. It ain't that things ain't changing around. almost like this. If there was a category five outside and, and you were in a shelter I gotta get this, grab this and you were in a shelter and in this shelter it was built to withstand a category five. <laughs> Though everything everything you worked for the house. The cars are being picked up and being tossed to and from. Yeah, that car you always wanted. That car you talked about. That car you, the car you talked about, that's the car I saw in my dream. That's your... And there's nothing wrong with it. Come on, come on, and you can afford to get the Benzo. There's nothing wrong with the Benzo. Just don't have your faith in it. Just don't have your identity in it. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. Because it's not the covering. It's not the place of protection. It's not going to shield you. It's not going to do. That thing ain't going to stop when that gap is open. That thing is not going to be what you need to go to the other side. Uh, so what's this? So while you can sigh 
Y'all get this. You can't take the Mercedes inside the shelter. Somebody give you the revelation of what I'm talking about. You can't take that five bedroom, two and a half beds, two and a half baths. You can't take that inside the shelter. You can't take all the expensive clothes you done purchased inside the shelter. Gospel 
And everybody hyped up. This is this your year. This your year. My Bible tell me tomorrow ain't promised. This your day. This your day. Some of us sitting here know people who did not enter into. They're nowhere near. They died in 2018. And you knew them in 2017. And you had no idea that they were going to be leaving in 2018. And some of us sit in this room, that person who left in 2018 brought you sorrow. And that's, a, and that's, 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 that's life. It's real. It brought you pain. That's real. That's, that's real. But you know your God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen, amen. And in your weakness, his strength is perfected. In your weakness, he'll be your strength. Stop looking for men to be your strength. Stop looking for women to be your strength. You're talking about I keep getting let down. I keep, that's because you keep going under a shelter that cannot withstand the storms. You keep putting your trust and hope in something that was not built to cover you. You got to put your hope in who created the heavens. I'm giving you a prophetic word right now. Put your hope in Jesus Christ. He says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurities, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. He said, I need you to start putting to death the things that's trying to pull you out of the safe place. I need you to put to death the things that keep you up at night. Y'all still with me, right? See, you can't sleep because you wanted to be with somebody else. You can't sleep because you wanted that she talking to somebody else. You frustrated because he won't act the way you want him to act. You tripping because your boss is, won't give you the promotion you think you deserve. He said, change your mind. Put your mind on those things which are above. And you'll be able to walk to every storm beneath. Jesus did it. And let, let me tell you how I know Jesus wants us to do it. He said, I called you to sit in heavenly places with me. He said, I want you to be in heavenly places with me. So what is he saying to us? He said, for the joy that was set before me, I endured the cross. And then he told you and I to deny ourselves and pick up. He told us to pick up our cross. But then he turned around and says, I'm going to cause you to sit in heavenly places with me. Somebody going to get this. So, if Jesus picked up his cross, but his joy came from picturing where he was going to be, he said, that's my same plan for you. I'm sorry, that's not a house. I'm sorry. That's, that's an eternal plan. That's a plan that you can have now, an eternal plan. A plan that's greater than the house because where you're going, guess what? There's no more, but there's no rust. There's no more sickness in what you're looking forward to go. There is, there is no poorness, no problem. When you're looking to go, there is no one. He said, I want you to look with He said, I want you to be with me. But some of us said, I don't want to be with you. So you keep selling your ticket from heaven for something down here, which is temporal. You keep giving away your ticket from heaven for something down here that is temporal. And you keep running to these, 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 this gospel that keeps feeding your flesh. But not equipping you for warfare. So now they told you you're going to have this. They told you you're going to get that. They told you you're going to make that all the things that you desire. 
fire they gonna give. But what they did not tell you was the storms that's coming. And when you first got there, I'm not saying what God, when they told you God didn't tell them to tell you. But what you didn't understand was the add-on that he was talking to you about was to prepare you for the place that you're going. So guess what? He said, I'm the author and the finish of your faith. So what I want to do is, I'm going to speak to you about some things down here. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take you to a process down here. Let us build up your faith and be looking for going up there. I need you to believe the bigger picture. So I'm going to build it up by small pictures. But I told you, where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. So let your treasure be in those things which are above or rusty more than a thief cannot steal. So what did he say? I prepared you not to get caught up in the things down here, but I'm going to use the things down here to prepare you to have the things to go up there. So why you down here, y'all got to hear him. Why you down here? He has equipped you by your faith. God said he's going to give me a house. Guess what? I ain't have no money in the bank. I didn't have so guess what happened? God began to open up doors. I'm like, how did, oh my God, how did that happen? How did I get favor here? Oh my God, I mean, it was just how God said it. You thought God was building up your faith about a house. No, he was building up your faith in the beginning of the ready for the big house. If he can do this, I know he's doing that. If he can add this, I know he got it ready up there. My down here faith is prepared. Meaning everything you've been talking about, people been laughing at you and clowning on you. They've been wondering why you ain't out there having sex, why you ain't out there doing what you want to do. Because your life is hidden in the truth. Your life is hidden in the word. Watch what he say. But when the word appear, they're going to be like, young baby with the glass, what's your name? Right there. Right behind me, young baby with the glass, what's your name? Samara. See Mary. Tell Mary, okay. I don't know Tamara, but so they say that's what Tamara was talking about. That's why she didn't go to the club. That's why Tamara didn't curse out. That's why she started changing. That's what she was because now the life, how many know it's nothing greater than to see the thing you've been standing on be manifested. Yeah. There's nothing greater. Then to see the thing you've been believing in. Begin. Woo! Everybody, everybody said, they're gonna be crying, but you're gonna be like, oh, you're gonna be like, Jim, I know it, I know it, I know it. He was good enough, I think, to know that was a kingdom coming. He was good enough, my faith to understand that I already believe as a heaven. I already believe it. Bless those who have not seen and believe. Why? Yeah, come on. If he spoke to me about the wife I had for me, and I got her 22, 20, 23 years, and she's been blessed. <laughs> if he spoke to me about the house, that he said, come on, somebody, go get this. If he spoke to me about the house and told me where to go, and I walked, and that's the house, he said, and I got it. And he spoke to me about the job that he had for me, and he had somebody knock on the door and put a paper on my He said, son,
we're in this place. You know what's funny? Let me tell you what's funny. You know why people take, you know why people take downers and oppressors and sleeping pills? Because they're in a society that's always changing. Y'all ain't hear me. See, when you run into somebody and they love is always changing, you don't know what to hold on to. Come on. When you run into somebody, anybody wants somebody who's constant. I want to know my life going to be faithful. If we got money or if we don't. I want to know that my wife going to be faithful. If I got muscles. Baby mama, what is, what is what are they? Is it is this my job? Is it my no? I know one that is constant. So guess what? You don't need to wait to 2019. 2019 is nothing but another year taking you to the end. What you need to understand is that there's gonna be some troubles and trials in 2019, but you've been prepared to rise for the occasion. You've been prepared to rise for the occasion. Let me tell you why. Let me say this to you. I'm almost there. In purity and lust, which it said, I, I wrote this down. In him, his word can take you beyond every situation and circumstances. His word is a safe place. God's word don't change because styles do. God ain't changing because we said it's good for men to be with men. God's word is not changing. God's word is not changing because we say it's good for women to sleep with women. God's word is not changing. God's word is not changing when he says you need to be married to indulge in sexual activity. 
His word is not changing. I don't care how cool. Okay, we got new churches now. They call themselves the cool church. But I found out something. Pay attention to the names of churches. Because the name of the church reflects the message. And which God gave or they created. And God ain't going around trying to let you know he God ain't cool. He ain't cool. God ain't, he ain't cool. He ain't cool. He the king of kings. And the Lord of Lord. And he know, and yet, especially when cool comes to where we're now beginning to have God adjust to us. Instead of us rising up to him. Amen. God is patient. He is long suffering. Come on, y'all. Aren't anybody glad about that? God is for them. God, and God don't care if you got on a pair of jeans or a suit. Long as your heart lined up with his word. Amen. Verse 6 says, Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Listen, because of what? Because of sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires, and greed. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. We don't have to be caught up in what is coming because we're in a place of constant. We're in Christ. He's coming. And he said, you cut, read it for yourself. It's in the, it's in the, uh, amen. Colossians, the third chapter, the sixth verse says, because of these, what? Yeah. Impurity, sexual immorality. And I'm going to tell you something. Can I be real? We will appear. The enemy is attacking our thoughts. Man, sex, thoughts. Come on. We got, ain't, ain't, ain't no time to hide no more. If you're battling with it, be honest. I'm battling with thoughts. I'm battling with it. Must match the beast. I'm battling with all these things. Why is the enemy attacking us in sexual ways? Because the Bible says if you defile the temple, God is obligated to destroy. Sex is the only sin that you use the temple with. That you have to defile the temple. So Satan has unleashed sexual mind. Some of us in this room, we battle with thoughts in our mind. We can close doors. But look at my say. I'm getting delivered. For the Bible says, only the pure in heart. Say, God, I need you to purify my heart. How many of us know we need God to purify our heart? Amen? We need God to purify our heart. I want to tell you, listen, God is building his kingdom. And you're the, you're the spiritual bricks. You're the body. We're going to, don't get me wrong, we're going to, everybody knows, we're going to 2019, we're going to, um, we're going to give the address out. We're going there at 6 o'clock and we're going to have fun. But I don't need no message about you. I've been living in, I've been a constant place Amen. since 2000, since 1995. Y'all ain't hearing me. There are things that God gonna add to you, but it's to build up your faith. See, God, let me tell you, if you notice when I was reading, what was funny about here, I, I, I have to read this and I'm gonna be finished. If you notice that he says this, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. See, to be ready to go where God is going, you have to put to death your desire. Yeah. And then he says, sexual immorality and purity. Let me tell you what Satan does. When you, when you and I are not looking toward the higher prize and we're looking down here for, for things, the things down here do not have the power to withstand the enemy's temptation. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all want to check it there. If you're looking for a house, even if you're looking for a position, those who are going to, I'm going to be a pastor. Being a pastor does not have the power to withstand the enemy's temptation. If that was a fact, how can you ask me pastors fall? 
being a son and a daughter, well, the Bible says that your spirit bear witness with his spirit and it cries out, Abba. Why is it a son and a daughter? Because he says a son and a daughter, they are heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. What is he saying? When you know that you are a daughter and son, you're connected to the one who gives you power to endure temptation. You have an inheritance flowing through you through the spirit of God to give you the power to overcome temptation. For the Bible says he who endure temptation shall receive a crown. A crown means authority. Look at someone say, I need some authority. Come on, don't lie. Look at someone say, because my flesh is tripping. Well, I'm so glad. I, some of us some of us so glad that God don't put a video up here and start showing us your 2018. Start showing us some of the thoughts. I'm glad God don't show some of the thoughts that we're going to be Look at somebody say, look at somebody say, stop playing before he exposes you. Listen, God is raising up the temple. He's raising up his sons and daughters to be holy, a holy temple. Satan is trying to defile the temple. But what Satan does is he promises you things down here. Get your faith in things down here. And then when things go up and get hard, he says, let me show you where you can find your relief at. When things get rough, get hard, here's a drink. When things get rough, get hard, here's a man. When things get rough and get hard, he offers you more sin to deal with the sin that you... He offers you more pain to deal with the pain you're trying to run from. But see, I want to be, I want to be, and that's what we're going to talk about Tuesday. I want to be in that new mind. We're going in. I'm telling you, God, all God has been doing with me, my, my spirit is birthing. God is building something. Don't miss it. I wrote on Facebook, please, when no, please see the ark. Let me help you out. The Bible says this. They say, the kingdom comes without observation. So when people tell you that the ark is over here, over there, over there, he said, don't go. He said, because the kingdom is within. He says, what I'm doing is within. Somebody needs to say. He said, what I'm doing is within. He said, the power is within. The place of safety is within. The place where people need to run to is... He said, you are what I'm building. He said, you are what I'm building. That's, anybody ever wonder why the enemy don't want you, he ever don't want you to go to church? And not only does he not want you to go to church, he don't mind, let him pick your church though. He'll send you to church, but you gotta let him pick it. And I promise you, when you're going in, you're like, mm, your flesh is going to be happy. Because you're going to walk out to my... He told me I was going to get married. He told me I was going to have a house. He told me God was going to give me a million. I was going to be a millionaire. You ain't even saved. You're not even saved. What is a dead man gonna do with a million dollars? But waste it. What is a dead man gonna do with a wife? But use it. Wouldn't God want to offer you the greatest gift? Wouldn't he want to offer you the He said the day you hear the word. That's how you know you're going to hear the word. Why? Because when they say car, your heart was like, yes. When they say house, you say, yes. When they say die, you say, no. When they say deny yourself, you say, no. When they say pick up your cross, I can't do that. When they say be holy, not me. When they say type God in this, who is that?
No. Listen. My only message to you is there going to be storms. People going to die in 2019. Some people in our family going to die in 2019. You're going to lose some things and you're going to gain some things. But if you stay with the one who is constant, you will walk through every storm. You'll be able to say, I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of my testimony. If you're sitting there tonight and you're saying, I, God, I know, because I know I, I see it in the spirit too. So now, God, I know you were talking to me. People tell me, man, I'm trying to get serious for the next year. You ain't trying to get serious for the next year. You're trying to get serious for today. Today. Ain't nothing going to happen. But if the number gonna change at the end. If you ain't serious today, you ain't gonna be serious today. You need to get serious today. How many know Jeopardy gonna come on in 2019? Some of you, that's my shit. How many of us know TV ain't gonna come on in 2019? How many of us? Hope to be going back to your job, or going to be going back to that same job in 2019. Some of y'all like I made a service. I don't know. <laughs> I, I said you're hoping. How some? How many? How many of some? How many of y'all know? How many of y'all have a business ideal right now, and it's gonna stay an ideal until you do something about it in 2019. And you'll be in 2020 talking about, I still got my business idea. Yeah. Yeah. Let the Spirit of the Lord lead you. God is not still water, He's flowing water. And hear what I say, let the Spirit of God lead you. Because your flesh will lead you into 100 ideas. And you're trying to produce 20 of them at the same time, ain't nothing prospering, nothing. Because why? You caught up in the idea of not caught. See, you missed Some of y'all missed the whole sermon already. All I did was say business, and y'all missed the whole sermon. If God gave you a business, how many know it's not about the business? It's the sermon. You got happy about the business. It wasn't about the business. What did the sermon say? It's about God being constant. The business, the business is about you leaving somebody to the place where God needs to be constant. Whatever God doing is to build up your faith about what he, what he getting ready to do. How many, how many of us, man, God really built your faith up in 2018? Yeah. How many of us, watch this, look up at me, look up at me. How many of us thought it was joyful when it was happening? We got somebody, I'm glad, I'm glad, hey, I ain't mad at you. It didn't seem joyful to me at all. Matter of fact, I was like, I'm like, what's this? <laughs> you be like, why is she tripping? How many of us saw some ugliness in yourself in 2018? <laughs> How many of us saw God's mercy in 2018? How many of us saw that God was long suffering in 2018? How many of us saw that God was able to comfort you in 2018. How many of us saw that God was able to provide for you in 2018? How many of us saw God save some people in 2018? How many of us saw God deliver people in 2018? Now I got one word for you for 2019. He's the same yesterday.
higher pride. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if you're not so, I wouldn't have said it.
I give you my mind, my heart, my soul, and my strength, God. Lord, I need it. God, I'm a bad I had my affections all the way down here. And last year proved it. Why? Because I was unstable in all my ways last year. I was up and down all last year. I was not stable. I was not stable. I was like a double-minded man who was being tossed to and from. But to this year, but God, I know right now, I'm about to get stable by stepping into you. By accepting what you have for me, God. By accepting the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lord. God, I'm tired of being all over the place. I'm tired of things always changing. I want my soul to be anchored. I don't want to be hot one day and cold the next. I don't want to be holy one day and struggling with the father the next. God, I ask you for your forgiveness. I feel in my spirit some of y'all are standing there, but I wanted you to hear what God said. He didn't tell you to stand where you stand. He said, come up here. See, the first move about first move about getting to the place where it's constant is obedience. You gotta be willing to move from where you at. You gotta be willing. See, that's what I found out. You gotta be. You gotta be willing to move with God. Because you know what? Anybody fear? A lot of times, fear will cause you to stay where you at. But see, we've been trying to get people to change. I'm trying to get you to come to a place where you're constant in Christ, where you're not double-minded. You know what God does? God. How many of us know this issue? God has been really merciful. Some of us have been in Rome. Some people have been in Rome again. How you know God? How you know God be merciful? Because He didn't destroy us. And if you've been wrong, you've been doing some of the things that are crazy, and God, uh, He brought you here tonight. That's because He loved you. Remember, I told you you were supposed to be here tonight. Remember when God told me he had to tell you that, you that He wanted you to hear? No, no, He wanted you to hear what He was saying tonight. Why? Because I say this to people, and I want everybody in this room to hear what the Lord is saying. We talk about God as building something. Amen? In the day of Noah, he was building. He's building now the kingdom. But you know the biggest question? Can I, can I share that with the biggest question? Why? Y'all gonna keep hearing me say, why did he build a ark? You will understand this sermon if you understand why. He built the ark because the stink of sin had come up to his nostrils in heaven. He built the ark as a place to be saved. That you may have a place to go before the day of reckoning. See, they don't preach grace so long that we believe judgment is not coming. 